Hola mi gente, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean. This is We Are Investing, a channel that's dedicated in investing and personal finance. Now on today's video, we are going to do a deep dive in how to trade options on Webull. This video is going to be jam-packed with information, so I'm going to put chapters down below. Feel free to skip around. If you already know something, you don't have to sit through that entire segment. You can jump to the next chapter. But in this video, we are going to go over how to trade options on Webull and it's tailored towards beginners. We are going to go over what options are, how to look at them, how they work, and then finally, we'll go over how to buy and sell calls and puts on this video. I'll make videos later in the future about other options trading strategies on Webull. But on this video, we are going to go over the fundamentals the basics, we're going to build a strong understanding on how options work. And if you're new to the game or you just want to learn more about options to improve your trading and investing strategies, then this video is for you. With that being said, please consider hitting that subscribe button, ringing that bell, and smashing that like button to help with the YouTube algorithm, to help grow my channel, and also to make you a better investor and or trader. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. You can also get access to a private chat room of over 500 investors where I'm there every day. You can ask me a question or the other investors and we also are extremely transparent. Whenever we buy or sell anything, we notify the entire community. It's a community where we grow together, learn together, and make money together. So with that being said, let's hop on over to Webull, I'm going to be showing you how to do it on your mobile device. I'm doing it on an Android, but it's going to be the same for an iPhone as well. And this is in 2022, the latest version of Webull. So with that being said, let's do it. All right, so I'm in Webull right now. And the first thing that you have to do before you start trading options is you need to get approval through your brokerage. And in this case, it's going to be Webull. So to do that, you're going to click on the little icon. Now I do want to just let you guys know about a stellar reward program that's going on right now with Webull, where if you refer one friend, you can get 10 free stocks valued up to $3,000. So if you want to join, then use the links that I'm providing down below to get access and get yourself 10 free stocks. It's free money, free stocks, so you can't beat it. But if we go back, the way that you're going to set up options trading is you're going to go to your account but then you're going to go to help center down at the very bottom. You're going to swipe right on the quick access and you're going to click on that options trading. And you're going to see that I'm approved for level three. Try to get approval for level three right now and you'll be able to do pretty much anything that you want to do in the options world. I don't recommend that you start trading spreads right off the bat, but if you have approval, then you don't need to go through this process later down the road. Level one approval is just gonna allow you to buy calls and puts. Level two approval will allow you to buy and sell covered calls and cash occur puts. Level three will allow you to trade spreads and do pretty much anything that you want to because everything that you see here, debit spreads, uh, credit spreads, butterfly, condor, there's just variation of spreads and how many spreads you open up. Level four is when you can do naked calls, and I never recommend do, doing that. And most brokerages won't even include level four. So you don't need to worry about that, but level three is going to give you everything that you need. So sign up for level three. If you get approval for level three right off the bat, great. If you don't, then you might, then you might have to build up your experience, build up your account so that you can get, so that you can get approval for level three. But this is the screen where you are going to apply for options trading. You're going to probably, it might not say reapply for options, it might just say apply for options in your case. You'll click on that, there'll be a bunch of questions, just answer them truthfully and apply for level three options trading and hopefully you get it. But you might not get approval to start, that's okay. You gotta work your way up, start with level one, then level two, then level three. And everything that we cover on today's video, you will have access or you will be able to do with level one uh, approval. All right, now that we signed up for options trading and you got approval, we can head on back and we can start taking a look at options. Now we're going to dive into a ton of information here. And this is where the true information starts. So to get started, 
We just need to open up an options chain. And I recommend that you follow along looking at the same stock. But depending on the date that you're watching this video, the options chain might look very different. So you can pick your own stock as well. But to get to the options chain for a stock, you're going to click on that magnifying glass on the top right. You're going to type in the ticker or the company's name. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to pick a company. We're going to pick Ford, ticker symbol F, and now the chart comes up. To get to options, you see that little chart button? Well, we're going to click on options. And now we have the options chain shown for Ford Motor Company. Now I'm going to do a little bit of uh, some changing here to get this to probably what it looks like for you. I have put selected. It's probably going to say both for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change that just for calls because we're just going to be talking about calls to start and the process is pretty much going to be the same for puts, but we'll dive more into put options later in this video. Now what I want to do is I want to make this as basic as possible and then we'll build off of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, click on my expiration date to minimize it. So now all you see are a bunch of dates shown on the on your screen here. Now the dates are the expiration date. But how I want to start off this video is I want to talk about the most important thing with options and that's going to be your premiums. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand on that 18th of March. I'm going to hit my little slider here on the bottom right. I'm going to click on that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my strikes. And instead of showing all, I'm just going to show 10. I'm going to go back. And what that does is basically it's going to show me 10 strikes at every expiration date. Now what I want to talk about is the premiums and we're going to talk about how premiums work. But premiums are essentially how much you pay or how much you get paid per option. For a call option to start, probably the most simple method is just to buy a call option. So the premium is going to be how much you pay to get into this position. Once you open it, the amount that you sell or the premium when you sell your call option is how much you're going to get paid. When you start dealing with level two options trading strategies and you're starting to sell calls or covered calls and you're starting to sell cash secured puts, well then you are going to be collecting the premiums. And we're going to talk about all of this stuff in more detail in this video as well as they start coming up in discussion. But the big thing to know with premium and we're going to talk about a lot of things is essentially the premium you have to times it by a hundred because the premium is the amount that you're paying to get into this call option per share and each contract includes a hundred shares of the underlying. The underlying in this case is Ford because we're buying call options for Ford stock. So Ford stock is the underlying. Now there are a few terms that you're going to need to know when dealing with options. Probably the most common used terms are going to be in the money versus out of the money. So in this case, you can see that Ford is currently trading at $16.06. And because these are call options, the call options that are in the money include strike prices, which is the column on the left that is a lower than the current share price. For puts, it's the opposite. In the money includes strike prices that are above the current share price. And you'll understand why that is later in this video when we actually go over how these work. But in the money are for call options are strike prices that are lower than the current share price. Out of the money is the opposite. And you can kind of see here by looking at the screen, it says ITM stock price $16.06 plus 2.03% ITM, and it's pointing up. So in this case, all of the strike prices that are above that stock, that stock price on the screen, but are lower than the stock price are in the money. And everything up and all of the strike prices down below, which have strike prices that are higher for instance, the $17 strike when Ford is trading at $16, that is an out of the money call option. 
And if it's confusing to see strikes descending like that, what you can do, and you can change the way that this is viewed on your screen, and we might as well do it, is if you click on those bottom three bars on the bottom right, and you click on sort by strike price, and we have it ascending, we can click on descending, and now you can see that the higher strikes are above and the lower strikes are down. So as we swipe lower or down, we're getting in the money, and when we swipe up, we're getting out of the money. This is more of an easier way to see on your screen. It makes more sense, but in your traditional, and we're gonna go back to the traditional way, the traditional way is ascending, and in most brokerages, the lower strikes are gonna be higher, and it's gonna work its way down. So that's the way we're going to show it because that's the way that I'm used to seeing it and I can teach you best by looking at something that I'm extremely familiar with. Now some other terms that you need to know are intrinsic value and extrinsic value for options. Now intrinsic value, you're going to have intrinsic value for call options when you pick a strike price that is in the money. And essentially your intrinsic value to calculate how much intrinsic value you have in an option, it's the stock price minus the strike price of the option you are choosing. So in this case, if Ford is trading at $16.06, and let's say that we were to do the $14 strike that expires on the 18th of March. Well, the amount of intrinsic value is $16.06 minus 14, so our intrinsic value is $2.06. And if you take a look at the bid, ask, and last, the last price, the, the last amount, the last buyer of this call option paid $2.08, which is just above the intrinsic value. That means that there's not a lot of extrinsic value in that call option. And that's because it expires on the 18th of March, which is just a couple days away. So there's not a lot of time left in this option. And basically what we did there is we did the calculation on how to find out what extrinsic value. Extrinsic value, the calculation to determine that is you take the premium, so let's say $2.08, and you subtract it from the intrinsic value, which is $2.06. So that call option, the $14 strike, has two cents of extrinsic value. Now these might just look like numbers on a screen to you and you might not understand why you're paying $2.08 for that $14 strike. Now remember, you have to times it by 100, so you would be paying $208 to get that call option. But they might just be numbers on a screen to you and you might not understand why that price is the price it is. Well, we're going to talk about what impacts premiums and how these prices are determined. So there are three main factors that impact the amount of premiums. How deep the option is in the money has an impact on the premium because that's going to be your intrinsic value. So as you can see by this options chain, the $16 strike is trading at 36 cents and the deeper we get in the money, the higher the premiums are because those options have more intrinsic value. So how deep in the money or intrinsic value, how big the intrinsic value is, will impact how much you pay in premium. That's one huge factor. Now another factor that's going to impact the amount that you pay in premiums is implied volatility. In layman's terms, implied volatility is the expected move in a stock. How much is it going to move up or down? And the wider that range is, or the higher the implied volatility is, the more the premiums are and the more expensive the options are going to be. Now, another factor, and this is huge as well, that impacts the amount that you pay in premiums is the amount of time left before expiration. Now, the expiration dates are shown here. And if we take a look at the $14 strike for March 18th of 2022, which is just a couple days away, is trading at $2.12. But if we minimize this, and let's say that we were to go to the 20th of May, and we look at that $14 strike, it's trading at $2.70. It's more expensive because there is more time left as well. 
So time, the amount of time to expiration date, the further out it is, the higher you are going to pay in premiums. Because what happens in the stock market typically is over a longer period of time, stocks typically go up. So as you hold this position longer and longer, the odds of the stock being higher than $16 and you having more intrinsic value is more. So the further out you go in expiration, the higher you are going to pay in premiums as well. But it's okay to pay more because time is also on your side. And if there is a move that goes against you, you have time to recover. So it's okay to pay more. I wouldn't say just buy the cheaper one because it's cheaper. You have to consider all of those factors. But anyways, those are the three main factors that impact premiums or the amount that you pay. The intrinsic value or how deep in the money is going to impact the premiums. The implied volatility, what is implied volatility that will also impact premiums. If you have earnings right around the corner, implied volatility is going to be high. Why? Because earnings can act as an event, as a catalyst that can drive the share price much higher or much lower. There's a lot of implied volatility with earnings. So as a buyer of a call or a put, you're going to be paying more leading into earnings. And that's something that you're going to have to deal with if you want to trade that way, which I wouldn't recommend because post earnings, you can get into an IV crush, which we're going to have to dedicate a whole other video to that. That's a little bit more advanced, but I digress. So how deep you're in the money impacts premiums, implied volatility impacts premiums, and time also impacts premiums. The more time you have on your side, the further out you are in expiration, the higher you are going to pay in premiums. And it's also important to know, and these are two important terms, credit versus debit. As a buyer of a call option or a buyer of a put option for beginners, you are going to be using net debit, meaning that you're going to pay for these options. If you were to sell call options or sell puts, which is level two options trading, then you're going to receive a credit. You're going to get paid. The amount of premiums or how much you're going to get paid to write that call option or put option. And writing is just another fancy word for selling something. You are the first seller. You are giving that contract to somebody else and that other person is the buyer. Now, with that being said, we talked about some of the main factors that impact premiums, but you can dive even deeper and put actual numbers on how much each option should go up or down based on some factors, based on the factors that we discussed earlier in this video in the prior chapter. And to calculate that, we use something called the Greeks. So on this chapter, we're going to go over the Greeks and how they impact premiums and how they impact your trade or your investment. So to do that, to make this much easier on yourself and me for teaching you, I'm going to change my options chain here just to show us a little bit less information and the information that I actually want to see. And that's going to be the Greeks. Now it's already there for you. You just have to swipe over and we can see the three main Greeks, but there's another one we're going to talk about as well. You can see that it has Delta, Gamma, and Theta. We're also going to show you Vega. And I'm not going to talk about Rho because it's not really important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that bottom two bars on the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, click on the columns. And what I want to see is instead of bid ask, I'm just going to see the last. I'm not going to take a look at percent change. I'm not going to look at mid. I'll keep implied volatility, delta, gamma, theta. And then I'll also add Vega and whatever. We'll show row as well. And I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to go back to the options chain. And now you can see that this information is just easier to see. It's right here. We also have implied volatility and the last price. So before we talk about the Greeks real quick, the last price is how much somebody paid for that options contract. Implied volatility is the expected move. The open interest is very important. Volume and open interest are important. 
open interest is how many contracts are currently out in the market and being held by somebody. So that gives you an idea of liquidity. If open interest is very low, you might have a hard time closing or trading your position and buying and finding a buyer or seller depending on what you're doing. And volume also impacts that as well. But volume is just for one day. Open interest is for the amount of contracts that are out in the market. Now we can talk about the Greeks. So the first one on the list is Delta. Now Delta is super important and it can have a huge impact on your investment in an option or your trade in an option because it's going to move the premium the most out of all the Greeks. Now Delta starts with D and it's easy to remember it this way. I'm gonna simplify it for a simple man. Delta is 0.88. D stands for dollar. Delta corresponds to the difference in the premium for a $1 increase in the underlying. The underlying in this case is Ford. It trades at $16.06. So if Ford was to go to $17.06, then the premium for this option would increase by Delta, which is 0.88. So in our case, if Delta is 0.88 and the premium, the last price was $3.95 the new delta uh, the new the new premium would be 3.95 plus 0.88 4.83 now 0.88 divided by 3.95 is a 22% increase $1 divided by 1606 which is the current share price is a 6% increase so if you were to hold the shares, you would get 16% returns. But if you were to invest in these options and you had a $1 increase in the stock, you would see a 22% return on the option. Options are way more volatile. And when things are good, you're going to reap way more benefits. But this also works on the flip side. If we go back to the options chain, if Ford was to drop a dollar, then the premium is going to decrease by Delta. So if Ford was to drop a dollar, then your new premium would be $3.95 minus 88 cents, which would be 3.95 minus 0.88, so 3.07. So with that being said, that's the first Greek, which is Delta, which is the change in premium for $1 increase or decrease of the underlying. The next one on the list is gamma, which also corresponds to delta. Now, gamma is just how much delta is going to change with a $1 increase or decrease of the underlying. So if the delta right now for this $12 strike is 88 cents, if Ford was to go up a dollar to 1706, you would have that 88 cent increase in the premium. But for the next dollar increase, so from 1706 to 1806, your delta is then going to be 0.92 or 92 cents. And that's because gamma is 0.04. So with every increase of the premium by a dollar, delta is going to increase by gamma. And for every decrease by a dollar of the underlying, delta is going to decrease by gamma. So if Ford was to go to $15.06, the new delta would be 84 cents. So let's play this out real quick. If the premium is $3.95, delta is 88 cents and gamma is 4 cents. And the stock price is $16.06. If, let's clean this up, to calculate what would happen with a $2 increase in the stock, so going from $16.06 to $18.06. The current premiums are $3.95. Current delta is 0.88. So this is the new premium with a $1 increase in the stock. This is if Ford was at $17.06. But gamma is $0.04. Cents, and let's move up the next dollar. So let's say that Ford goes from $17.06 to $18.06. Well, we gotta increase the premium by delta and gamma. 
So the new delta, because we had that $1 increase, is 0.88 plus 0.4, so 0.92. If we experience that $1 increase, which we're saying we do, and we get to $18.06, then this premium is going to increase by, let me go back a sec, by the old delta, which is 0.88, plus the gamma, and these together are your new delta, so the new premium is $5.75. That is from the old premium of $3.95 divided by $3.95 is a 46% return on your investment. 46% on the options. For the stock, it's a $2 increase over $16.06, so a 12% return on the stock. That is how big the moves can be, and that's how you can calculate them. Now, obviously, this works in the opposite direction as well, because like we said, if we go back to the chain, gamma is the increase or decrease depending on the move of the stock for every $1 off a of delta. So if the stock was to drop a dollar, the new delta would be 0.88 minus 0.04, so 84 cents. And as you can see by that direction, the deeper you get in the money, the higher delta is going to be to it's at a point where it's $1 and for every $1 increase in the stock, you're going to have a $1 increase in the premium because what you're going to be paying for the premium is essentially all intrinsic value. And the further you get away from being deep in the money and let's say you get out of the money, you can see that delta is less and less. For the $21 strike, Delta is 0.13 because we're out of the money. And that's because that option at $21 doesn't have a lot of intrinsic value. It's essentially all extrinsic value. So that wraps it up for gamma. We talked about delta, gamma, and then the next important one is theta. Now theta is time decay and it's always going to be negative. So for every day, you are going to see a decrease in the premiums by theta. So let's say, let's take a different, let's look at a different stock. Let's look at one that's out of the money. Let's take a look at the $17 strike. And theta right now is 0.01. So one cent. What that means is that for every day, if the stock was to stay, if the stock was to stay flat and not move at all, the premiums, which are $1.06, would decrease by a penny every single day. So tomorrow, if we didn't see a change in the share price, the premiums for this option would be 1.05. So I would lose a penny off of that, off of those options. Now 0.01 divided by 0.06 is almost 1%. So a penny doesn't seem like a lot just to start, but losing 1% every day doesn't feel good. So that's something to consider. Now, an easy way to remember theta is it starts with T and T corresponds to time decay. Now, something to know with theta is the closer to expiration you get, the higher theta is going to be. What we're looking at right now is May 20th, which is still ways away, 66 trading days away. If we were to look at an option that was to expire in 10 days and we look at theta, now we're talking about two cents for something that's in the money. But for something out of the money, looking at that $17 strike, we're looking at a two cent decrease. A two cent decrease off of a 20 cent premium. So in that case, instead of theta losing you 1% every single day, Theta is making you lose 10% every single day if the option was just to stay flat. And the further out of the money you get, let's say the stock was to decrease a little bit, well then you would lose some money on the premiums because of delta, but theta as a percentage of the overall premium is also going to increase. The further out of the money you are and the closer to expiration you are, Theta is going to be more and more of a pain in your ass. And that wraps it up for Theta, something to know. Now Vega 
is based off of one increase in implied volatility. So let's say at the $17 strike, Vega is 0 0.008. Let's pick something that's one cent. It's the $16 strike, Vega is 0 0.01, so one cent. If you see a 1% increase in implied volatility, then the premium is going to go from 0 0.61, 61 cents, to 62 cents. If you saw a 1% decrease in implied volatility, well, then the premium for this option is going to drop a cent and it's going to go to 60 cents. And then last on the list is row, and this is based off of the change in premium off of the change in interest rates. And that's why nobody talks about it because interest rates are pretty flat. The numbers are so low, they're 0.002, so you're not even, so you're well below one penny. Um, so they don't have a huge impact, and that's why it's often not discussed when talking about the Greeks. But essentially, what you have is delta. That's going to be the increase or decrease in premiums for a $1 increase or decrease in the underlying. You have gamma, which is going to be the increase or decrease of delta based on a $1 increase or decrease of the underlying. Next, you have theta, which is time decay, which is how much the premiums are going to go down every single day. And this number will change the closer you get to expiration. If you buy options that are further out, for instance, if we were to go to January 2024, and we look at theta, it's 0.0003 for an in the money call option. These are leaps. Leaps don't lose money to time because there's essentially no theta. As you get closer to expiration date, theta is going to increase. And at that point, you either want to sell your call option or roll it over to an, an expiration date that's further out. And then Vega is how much the premium is going to increase or decrease responding or corresponding to a 1% increase or decrease in implied volatility. If implied volatility is high and then implied volatility gets wiped out, let's say earnings are over with and there's not a lot that can move the stock, meaning that implied volatility gets wiped out, well, then you're going to see a big move in your premiums because you're going to have a big increase or decrease, most likely a decrease in that situation I just mentioned, in implied volatility. So you might have a 25% decrease in implied volatility. So if Vega is 0.01, one penny, you got to times that by 24. So 24 cents is how much that premium is going to decrease by. That wraps it up for the Greeks. We talked about how premiums work. We talked about Greeks. That should give you a good understanding of the craziness of the options trading market and how options are determined, how, how are prices actually made up and at the end of the day, it's a market and how much somebody's willing to pay for it, it's on them. But those are the underlying fundamentals and principles of how options are traded and where these numbers come from and how to make sense of all of this. And once you figure all of that out, it doesn't take long to learn that. You just have to start trading a little bit and you'll start to see how Greeks can impact you. You have to be you have to go through an IV crush to realize, hey, these things are real. And sometimes just buying a call option, even though you have a stock that moves a ton in a direction, it might not work out for you and you could lose money even though the stock is moving in your favor. So Greeks are definitely something you need to understand. And once you understand them completely and get a good grasp and understanding, you're going to understand how options really work. So now that we talked about some of the harder stuff, let's talk about expiration date and what it is to actually buy a call option. What are you buying? So let's do the expiration date. That's the 25th of March of 2022. That's 10 days away. And let's say that we were to buy a call option and let's buy it for the $15 strike. So how much are we going to pay for it? Well, you know the answer to this. It's the premium times 100. So the premium is $1.29. So we're going to pay $129 for that option. And that's for call options. But what is a call option? Well, call op well, a call option is the right, but not the obligation to buy 100 shares at the strike price. 
So what we are buying in this call option is the right to buy 100 shares of Ford at $15, no matter what the price is. Now, obviously, if Ford is below $15, let's say it's at $14, we're not going to buy 100 shares at $15 when we can buy 100 shares on the open market for $14. Why would we pay a dollar more per stock when we don't have to? So that contract would expire worthless because in that situation, it would be out of the money. Now, we also have to consider the premium that we paid. We paid $1.29. So essentially, our break even is $16.29 per stock. So as long as Ford is above $16.29, we make out. Let's say that Ford goes to $17.29. Well, we can buy 100 shares at $15, so we get that difference, but we also paid $1.29 per share for that contract. So in reality, we only make $1 difference in the stock. And you times that by 100, so we would make $100 profit. What we could do, and a few things here, and what I always recommend, is I don't really like taking shares. I don't like holding my options through expiration date. I'll just sell them right before expiration for the full price. And then if I want to buy shares, I can do so at a later date. I don't recommend holding options through expiration, but that's essentially what you are doing or how you calculate your profit. For instance, like we let's just do the same situation. It's a $1 difference between the amount that we paid because of the strike price versus the current price of the stock. So the stock's at $17.29, the strike price is 15, we paid $1.29, so our break even is $16.29. We could take delivery of 100 shares at $16.29 net, and then sell them at the market, which is currently trading at $17.29, and that's where we make our $1 difference and you times it by 100. Or we can just sell the call option and make a hundred bucks off of that as well. Because at that point, this call option is going to be all intrinsic value. And if the stock's $17.29 and the strike price is 15, well, then the premium is going to be $2.29. And we paid $1.29 for that contract. So that's how you would get your full profit. It's all intrinsic value right before expiration if you're in the money. So we could just sell this call option for $2.29 instead of taking 100 shares. And that's why I never actually take delivery of the shares. I just sell my call options. Now, if you're not paying attention and they do um, expire and you're in the money, well, then your broker is going to look to take 100 shares at $15. And then you're going to have to sell them if you didn't want them in the first place. Or with Webull, you can put something that says do not exercise at expiration. And essentially, that's going to give your brokerage the that's going to give your brokerage the signal that you don't want to take on 100 shares because at that case, you would need 1500 bucks to take on 100 shares of Ford at $15. So the call option is the right but not the obligation to buy 100 shares of the underlying at the strike price. And obviously, like I said, if the strike price is out of the money, meaning that you could buy 100 shares in the open market for cheaper, you're not going to that option is going to expire worthless because nobody is going to buy stock for more than it is trading in the open market. If you are in the money, the strike price is below the current stock price and you are below and you are above your break even point, then it's your option if you actually want to take delivery or you can just sell the option before it expires. So with that being said, let's go over an example and I'm going to show you how to trade options on Webull and we're going to start with the call option. Now we did the 18th of March, we did the 25th of March, let's pick the uh, April 8th of 2022. And let's pick a call option that's in the money because it's better to buy call options that are in the money. What we're going to look at is the $15 strike is trading at $1.24. Now, to buy this call option, what you're going to do is you're going to click on it, and here's your screen. Now, there's a few things that you want to know, and that's the bid versus the ask. 
So the bid is the lower end of what people are bidding for this call option. Let's say that there's 20 people bidding. Well, the lower end or the majority of them are bidding at $1.49. Let's say that there's two sellers out there. The higher end, they're asking, that's why it's called the ask, is $1.58. The spread between the bid and the ask is your gray zone, and you could get an order filled anywhere near that. The closer you get to the seller, the closer you get to the ask price, the more likely your order is going to be filled. And the closer you get to the bid, the harder it is for your order to get filled. Now, Webull right now is showing me at a limit price of $1.58. That's not smart for me to get to the seller's price right off the bat. I could save myself $5 by picking a strike that is by picking a price that is lower than that. So what you can do is you can adjust your price and I recommend you always do this. Take a look at the spread between the bid and the ask and try to get an order filled that is lower and closer to the bid. So we can do 1.53. Now you're going to pick the amount of contracts. Now remember your premiums times 100. So it's really based on your profile in your on your portfolio and how much risk you can take. But let's just proceed with one. Now the time and force is day or good to cancel. Now something you need to know with options, they only trade in market hours. They only trade from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. No matter what brokerage you have, options only trade during market hours. And you can have this time and force till day. And when market closes, if your order did not get filled, it gets canceled and that's it. If you have it good till canceled, that doesn't mean you're going to get this order filled in extended hours in pre-market or after, after hours. It's just it's going to look to fill this market the next day as well during market hours. Now in Webull, there are a few things that you can do and modify this to give you more information. The chart that you see up top is the prices that our people are paying in premium for that strike price and expiration. The chart below, if you click on the three bars up top here, the chart below is your show underlying chart. That's the actual share price of Ford. One other thing you can do is if you click on single option here, it's going to give you your risk profile for this options trade. Now for buying call options, your risk is limited. It's how much you pay for the call option. So the premiums were $1.53. Remember, times that by 100, we paid $153 for this call option. That's our risk. And that's why the red part of this is capped out at 153. The max profit is unlimited because the stock can go higher and higher and higher. And that's why you start to see green the further or the higher in share price you go. Now your break even is the strike price plus the premium. We talked about this in that prior example. So $15 plus $1.53, your break even for this contract is $16.53. It's also going to tell you some information here as well. It's going to tell you delta, theta, implied volatility. And if you click on the little icon on the top right, it's also going to give you some other information like your probability analysis. And if you hold your finger and drag, it's going to give you a percentage of the probability of that option ending up in the money or out of the money. OTM is out of the money, in the money is ITM. But heading back, if you agree with this, you would hit done, you will review your order, and then you will send it. And that's how you buy a call option in Webull. So next up, we're going to talk about how to do put options on Webull. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay on single options. We're not going to dive into anything else in this video, but instead of calls, we're going to do puts. I'm going to select a different expiration date. Let's say that we're going to pick the 16th of September of 2022, so 185 days away. Now, when you buy a put option, it's a bearish trade, meaning that you think the stock is going to go down. But what is a put option? Well, a put option is a contract that gives you, the buyer, the right but not the obligation to sell a stock at a strike price. So let's play this out. If Ford is $16.06 
and we buy the $15 strike put option. This gives us the right to sell 100 shares of Ford at $15. Now, obviously, if Ford is trading at $16 or anything above $15, why would we sell 100 shares of Ford at $15 when we can sell it on the open market for $16? It doesn't make any sense. And in that case, we wouldn't do that. Why would we take that loss or miss out on those profits? But let's say that Ford was at $12. And we bought that $15 put option. It gives us the right to sell Ford at $15 a share when it's trading at $12. So essentially, we have the right to sell Ford at a price that is $3 higher than the current market price. The difference between the market price and our strike price is the profit that we make in a nutshell, but you have to consider premiums. So Let's just proceed a little bit quicker with the put options. Now that you know what a put option is, let's take a look at that risk profile to show you how you make money with a put option. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy the $15 strike put option that's currently trading at $1.82 by selecting it. And let's take a look at the bid versus the ask, $1.81 versus $1.85. So I'm going to say that I can get this for $1.82. Now we're going to click on that single option. And here's our risk profile for this put option. Now our break even is $13.18. So if Ford is below $13.18 at expiration, we're going to be profitable on this trade. And that's because we picked the $15 strike, but we paid $1.82 in premiums, which dropped our break even all the way down to $13.18. The max profit for a put option is capped. A stock cannot go below $0. So essentially, our max profit is if Ford goes to $0, and because our break even is $13.18, you times that by 100 and your max profit is that number. And in this case, $1,318. This is your risk profile for the put option. But essentially, it's a bet that the stock is going to go down. And the amount of premiums will impact what your break even is. It's important to remember that. A lot of people, when they look at options, they say, this is the $15 strike. If Ford drops below $15, I'm going to make money. That is not necessarily the case. It depends on the pre it depends on how much premiums you pay if you hold this to expiration. But let's back out again. Real quick, you have to remember that there is delta and gamma, and because this is 185 days, there is some theta. But if you still believe that this is a bearish trade and it works out, for every $1 decrease in the stock, you're going to see a 36 cent increase in the amount of premiums. So if Ford was to drop a dollar today and Delta currently is 36 cents, then the premium is going to increase by 36 cents. So it's going to go from $1.82 plus 36 cents, $2.18, um, 0.36 divided by one what did I just say this was? 182 is a 19% increase, if that's going to happen now. But the closer that you get to expiration, the and the further out of the money you are, the less delta is going to be. So just keep in mind, there are many factors that will impact your premium and how much money you either make or lose on the trade or investment. It's not as simple as just saying, oh, if Ford is below $15, there are other factors to consider, which we talked about all of them in this video. So essentially that wraps it up for how to trade options on Webull. The process is super simple. And like I said, Webull is currently running that promotion where you can get 10 free stocks worth up to $3,000. But if you're also interested in trading options in Webull, they charge $0 in commissions on options. So it's a great place to start trading options so that you can learn the ropes before you start paying all of these commissions and other brokerages when you start trading in higher volume.
In addition, stay tuned for future videos where we'll talk about other options trading strategies on Webull, other options trading strategies in general. I'll go over some of my trades and what I'm actually doing. You can also join the Patreon. It will give you access to that Discord server where you'll see whenever I buy or sell anything, including covered calls, cash occurred puts, poor man's covered calls, credit spreads, debit spreads, just call options, put options, depending on what I think is the best options trading strategy for the particular stock for that particular situation because options give you so much flexibility. It's never one size fits all. In addition, if you like this video, I don't know how long this video was, but we went over a lot of information. Please consider hitting that subscribe button, ringing that bell, and smashing that like button. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions, comment down below. But outside of that, I hope you have a successful options trading journey. I hope I was able to teach you something. And I hope through this time that you put in researching all of this, that you actually start making some money, that you actually start making money trading options and investing in options as well. Stay tuned for future videos. I love hearing from you guys. This is We Are Investing, a community where we learn together, grow together, and make money together. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. And this is We Are Investing, and together we are invincible. See ya.